Hi, everybody. It's Julie from the PMFRC, and I want to welcome you all to this week's Fireside Chat. Um, for those of you who are new to the PMFRC page, the Fireside Chat is something that we started doing on a weekly basis um, when we all moved into the COVID world and we all moved back to our houses and we realized that we missed you guys. Um, so instead of you coming to see us, we have decided on a weekly basis that we would come to see you on your screens in your homes. And each week, one of our goals was we wanted to give you an opportunity to hear about the programs that the PMFRC is still running, um, the things that the supports that are still available to your family, and we're we'll talking to different people in the community about their inputs about their programs. Today, we are talking about volunteer services. Um, this is the second time we've talked about volunteer services. If you remember in May, we talked about Volunteer Recognition Week, but this week we wanted to talk about the program overall and what's happening with it. Um, and I have a number of guests that I'm going to introduce in one second. But what I did want to mention before we do that is that if you have questions for us about volunteer services, um, about how you become, can become a volunteer, please add them to the comments below. Um, we have someone who's watching them who will let us know when we'll get to those at the end. Also, if someone talks about uh, a link or a website or an email address or a telephone number, please don't worry about having to uh, grab that or write that down. We will also post that in the comments. So it'll be nice and easy for you to find. And um, if you come back later, you will know where that is. Um, so before we start, we'll just do a round table and introduce all of our guests. Uh, Sarah Gunter is our volunteer services coordinator. Sarah Walker is one of our volunteers, um, as is Suli Adams uh, and Sydney Oaks. And Claudia Beswick is our executive director and she is a regular guest on our fireside chats. And if you've watched these before, you know I start every fireside chat asking Claudia, what's new at the PMFRC? Um, how are things going in our transition back to normal? And uh, is there any news that you wanna share with everybody? Uh, so today I'm going to give you a couple of updates and I'm going to refer down to my notes um, just because there is quite a bit. So I'll start off with the daycare because I know that's uh, what a lot of people are looking for information on and it is the focus right now. So we are um, focusing on reopening Little Troopers North and Little Troopers South and our private home daycare centers. So we've submitted our revised um, protocols and procedures to the county. Uh, the ministry has them. We have inspections going on sometime this week. We have staff coming back. Staff are working uh, really hard on getting uh, updated and trained on all the new processes that are put into place. Um, we, I will say though that we are um, with a limited capacity. We're functioning at probably 50 or 60 percent and that's because of the cohort restrictions that the ministry has put in place for all daycares. The good news is the families that were surveyed uh, in the daycares, um, we're able to meet those demands right now and that we're hoping by September when everybody else is looking for the care that um, we'll have some other updates on what we're able to provide by then. But all that being said, um, and if all of our check boxes uh, get cleared and okay, um, we're hoping to reopen by the uh, 14th of July. And so if that is the date that the ministry approves us to open, then it would be a staggered approach for the families. So the supervisors in the daycares, they'll reach out directly to the families to let them know what the new processes are and what day that their uh, children can come into the center. And then by the 20th, which I believe is the following Monday, um, we will be at the maximum capacity that we're allowed to for the center. So that's the daycare. With regards to our other locations, we're still working on a resumption plan. Um, as you all know, because the Northside office and the Family Center are in the uh, RHUs or PMQs, uh, physical distancing is, is a bit of a challenge with the two meter distance because the, the buildings are really stacked with staff. Um, so we, we're looking at um, limiting the number of people in the buildings and we're probably going to focus all of the accessibility for the families through the north side office. So that's the plan. We're going to follow the garrison's plan for reopening to the next stages. And if that's the case, then uh, people can come visit us at the north side and then we'll work with PSP on the south side community center to see when reception services and when that building will be open to the public as well. But right now, um, for because it's this time of year with APS, all of the in clearances, out clearances can all be done virtually, all the DAGs uh, are being done virtually, and all the staff continue to work from home and are accessible. So the links will be provided for each of the departments if you want to reach out to them, if you have any questions, and of course all of the virtual programming that is going on 
um, will continue to be that way for the next little while. So um, I think all in all, we're, we're really working towards the next stages. We have a solid uh, resumption plan in place. Our priority all obviously will remain um, safety first for not just staff, but for our clients. And uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's it on the facilities. I do want to talk a little bit about initiative that was started with the mental health team during mental health month in May, and that's the hashtag kindness. So if you remember the uh, video that we did at that point, we talked about getting through the, the pandemic by spreading kindness in the community. So we know it's important to be kind, especially as we navigate all of these uh, changes and uncertainty that's in, in our world right now. So we want to hear about the kindness that um, the stories that are happening in the community and the employees, our employees have already kicked this campaign off. So with permission from the pay it forward people, we're going to collect many pictures of everyone's kindness moments and do a collage in a PowerPoint presentation, which we hope to launch and present at our AGM in September. Um, so like I said, staff have already been out in the community social distancing, of course, and they're spreading the kindness by dropping little gifts at someone's door. Um, they could be putting s'mores kids together or Mr. Freezy's or paying for someone's coffee, or it doesn't even have to be anything that costs something. It could be an act of kindness. So you take a little note of thanks where you can and ask that person to help spread the hashtag kindness by paying it forward to someone else. Our goal is to keep the community involved we want to really hear your story. So if you can take some pictures where you can, uh, respecting the physical distancing and uh, making sure that there's nothing identifiable in the picture unless you have the person's permission to do so and share it with us at the PMFRC. And I'm sure Julie will share where that can be sent or found, but we want to catch the community on fire with hashtag kindness. There's so many good initiatives out there. We know the community has um, already done some good deeds and acts of kindness all over the place. So despite COVID, we're going to uh, continue doing all of this good work and we wanna showcase that and uh, let's keep it rolling. And I think that's it. So I made a couple of notes when Claudia was talking. So in the comments section um, after the session is over, I'm gonna add the link uh, to the page on CAF Connection where you can find those clear in and clear out forms just to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, and we're also going to add the staff contact list. Claudia mentioned that we're all working from home. So that's gonna give you a better idea of where you can find this on one quick and easy page. Um, and the last thing is the kindness uh, thing. We will add uh, the post, uh, what the hashtag is for that. On a personal note, I did have someone drop by with a giraffe themed gift for me because I love giraffes. I was so excited when the baby with giraffe was born uh, in Toronto. And it's that one small thing just made my made my day. You'd never know what an impact that kindness is gonna make on somebody else. So take the time and do it and, and then pay it forward from there. Claudia, I'm gonna come back to you. Um, you have been working at MFRCs for a couple of years, I'm not going to put a number on that, for a couple of years in different roles. And one of the roles that you played was as a volunteer coordinator. And I know uh, because of that, volunteers play, uh, have a special spot in your heart. Um, can you just talk a little bit about the role of volunteers and what they bring to the PMFRC? I think volunteers, um, they participate and volunteer with us for so many different reasons. They, they want to share their skills. They want to share their experiences. They want to stay connected in the community, they want to learn new skills, or they just want to meet people. I think that's really important, living that military lifestyle, and I think that's why this is such a huge beneficial program to the organization. Involving volunteers can really add great value to what the MFRC does. You know, they're a large part of helping us um, identify what our strategic objectives are, um, and just really sharing what our mission and our values are. And they're out in the community, they're, they're working right alongside the employees with our clients. And I just wanna highlight some of what the volunteers have done and how they've left their mark in our organization. So we know the board governs the organization. They um, initiate what our mandate is, they work on our strategic priorities and Sydney can really speak towards that. Um, volunteers support our childcare programs, not just with uh, cleaning toys, but they do programming prep. Sometimes they're in with the children in our play program. 
Um, they sit on volunteer committees. We have volunteers that sit um, on a committee that creates the program statement for the daycares. We have volunteers that support our deployment program. They have a deployment committee, same with our information referral and welcoming new families to the community. And we have volunteers even in our mental health department who uh, work with the team on the walk-in clinics when, we, when we're able to be back uh, in our centers and actually see people again. Um, so they do a lot. They, they support our special events. They give us the feedback. They, they really do so much for the organization. And we try to match the volunteers with their passion, right? That, that's the best thing about it. And for as much as we're able to provide support to the volunteers, they give so much, so much back in return. So we certainly wouldn't be as successful in our organization or with our programs and activities as we are without um, being um, a part of our organization. And it is really, truly a, a rewarding department and a piece of my heart that will always stay with me. Sarah, when I was putting the notes together for this session, I couldn't believe it when I realized you have been our volunteer coordinator for almost a year now. It, it flew by. So Sarah has been in the role for almost a year. Do you want to talk about what you're like the last year and what you've learned from our volunteers, the kinds of roles they do and what the volunteer program means to you? Absolutely. So this past year has really shown to me how much our volunteers support that we're, the agency. Um, also, how eager they are to lend hands, especially during this time or COVID time. I'm getting multiple emails, just people wanting to help out with our volunteers. So it definitely just shows how caring they are. In my role, I really get to know the volunteers and I get to see um, how their uniqueness that they bring to the organization. So that truly has been a highlight, just getting to know everyone and the connections that I've made. Um, in our normal world, we're going to call it our normal world when we go back to it, we have a variety of volunteer positions available. Um, they include everything from supporting on the administrative side of things in the various departments, um, helping with programs, employment, coach assistance, uh, conducting warm calls to our military families, researching and planning for our program and services. Uh, Claudia touched on that a little bit. Uh, joining some of our committees to help with the planning. We also have them help out in our child care programs, anywhere from like handyman positions. So we have them even assembling furniture, uh, putting together stuff like that, as well as supporting and helping our mental health walk-in clinic. And to be honest, the list just goes on and on from there. So if you are interested in getting involved in the PMFRC um, and you have a special talent or something that you want to do, we can find a place to put that to work. Absolutely. Um, just because of the time of year that it is and people are coming to the PMFRC, there's some folks maybe that aren't familiar with us. They are just being posted to Petawawa and welcome. We're happy to have you. Um, how does somebody get in touch with you to become a volunteer? Yeah, so the process is pretty simple. I like to say it's three steps. The first step is to fill out an application form. Step one, <laughs> fill out an application form um, to become a volunteer with us. The link will be posted below. You can also email me directly and I can always send it uh, through to you. On this application form, it just gives me a little bit more idea of um, your work experience, your contact information, your personal goals, those kinds of things. It also adds you to our volunteer database, which is a really great tool that I use to communicate with our volunteers as well as post current uh, volunteer opportunities. So once our volunteers have kind of been onboarded, they would gain full access to that database. From there, I would reach out to who applied for the application and we, step two, <laughs> um, is the orientation and the interview phase. That's where you get to meet me. Um, so we could do that via Zoom or in person when we get to that point. And from there we um, sit down and I re it really gets me, um, gives me the information that I need to match you based on the goal of the volunteer with the positions that we have available. We also go over um, PMFRC's policies and procedures and just kind of get um, each other on the same page in terms of supporting one another and that way we can support those goals. And then step three is completing a criminal record check. And that's it, three steps. Easy peasy, nice and easy. Um, one of the things that we wanted to talk about, it was one thing for us to talk about volunteer services, but we thought the heart and soul of the program really is our volunteers. So we wanted to invite a couple of volunteers to come and to talk about um, working with the PMFRC, what they like to do, why they decided to volunteer. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a round table. I'm gonna start with Sarah Walker. Um, Sarah, do you wanna talk about your volunteer experience with the PMFRC? Uh, so I got involved with the MFRC originally back in October 2018. 
I went to the open house and I met up with uh, Christina, the previous volunteer services coordinator, as well as Natasha, who was the French language uh, program director. And uh, I said, I have degrees. I have degrees in English, theater, and teaching English as a second language. Use me. That was the bare bones gist of the conversation. I want to do something. Here's my education. Just use my skills. And that turned into a, a fairly regular position, actually, with employment services. Uh, I would go in once or twice a week. I would help with administrative uh, jobs like helping with filing helping with greeting clients uh, but i would also help people write and edit their resumes and get them ready for applications that even evolved with the help of natasha and community engagement where i started teaching an english as a second language course this past winter and i was having so much fun because it'd been so long since i got to teach and that hopefully is going to evolve again into a, a more regular teaching position where i'm teaching hopefully a couple of days a week, uh, but we'll see how that goes after everything opens up again. But I, like, I am a military spouse. My husband's been in for about three years and I needed to meet more people within the military community despite growing up here. I didn't know a lot of people in the military community. So this was my in really to start meeting more people who were like me and in the same life situation as me. I don't know about the rest of you all, but when I, was, when, I, when I became an adult, I found it's harder to go out and meet people when you come to a new community. Like, how do you go out and and make new friends? It's not like being in the schoolyard and, and going and, and shaking hands. People think you're odd in the store if you want to just come on up and want to be my friend. But the MFRC gives you an opportunity to get out and meet like-minded people and, and make those connections. Suli, you have been a volunteer for many years. Um, I've seen you at so many events over the years and you've done a number of things. Do you want to talk about some of your experiences and what you enjoy about volunteering? I do. I'd like to add to what Claudia had said. I think the um, volunteering in the PMFRC programs, really it's about um, building a quality of life. I've um, participated in some activities like uh, deployment. I volunteered for them and it's just, um, so hard when the soldiers are leaving and the spouses come in not sure and the kids are teary and the support that PMFRC provides, it just, they, they walk out happy, you know? So it's very, very fulfilling. I've learned a lot about uh, military life and a civilian. So this was all new to me until I moved to Petawawa. Um, other ways there was, I participated in uh, a program for uh, autistic children and it's just so rewarding to see them blossom and, and come up. But um, I like volunteering because uh, it gives me an insight into the military life. It's also a lot of fun. Like you can imagine uh, one time it was the amazing race program and I was doing makeup. So, um, you know, I was doing makeup. I wasn't doing makeup, but this, the wife was doing makeup on her husband and putting on lipstick and he's big and macho and tattoos and he had to walk out and drive with lipstick and eyeshadow and you can imagine how hilarious that can be so it's it's a lot of fun i also um participated in uh, when the uh, soldiers went to latvia there was a family uh event and i was making snow cones but it i also um the group next to me were military men and talking about their experiences in different countries and what they actually do was very, um, it really made me appreciate what our military actually does for us and why they're so committed. Um, it also brought in like mothers and fathers of the soldiers, which normally you see spouses and children, but it was great to see um, how they were also being supported by the um, uh, comrades of the uh, soldiers. And I got to try uh, ammunition, which I had never done. <laughs> so, you know, one, one aspect is fun and meeting people and learning a lot about the military life and the challenges that people have. Um, the other is a little more serious. It's more um, skill-based. I have two skills that uh, uh, I usually uh, participate with. One is the fact from my career, I've done a lot of different jobs. I started off working with uh, human DNA, then I made nuclear fuel, then I was an auditor, then I was a regulatory specialist, and a few other careers in between. 
but it's about transferable skills mm -hmm. and marketing yourself. And with age comes wisdom and experience. And uh, I volunteer for employment services that way. And I help people prepare for interviews. And they, it's so rewarding to see when they come in, they're not sure, they're not confident. And then you draw all these skills out that they didn't know they had. And they go out feeling like, yeah, I'm so great, I can do this. So it's, it's really great. And um, the feedback we've got, not everybody provides feedback back to the employment services, but of the ones that I have uh, coached, uh, it's been 100% uh, employment. Oh. So that's really good. Some of them we never hear from, so we don't know if you know all of them are 100%, or, but the ones who do provide feedback, uh, so, you know, it, it feels really good that you've helped somebody and these are skills that they'll have for the rest of their lives. It's just knowing how, you know, and the other skill I have is a hobby, which is Middle Eastern dancing. And uh, with that, I performed for the military events and so on. But mostly it's with, uh, I volunteer for PSP as well and with their youth programs. And it's extremely rewarding because one of the programs I uh, participated in is the Dove Self-Esteem Program. And in one of those sessions, um, I dance with a, a Moroccan tray with teacups and candle lights and the teapot and all that. So we used that idea and we made a tray and they, they um, filled the tray with things that were they got from Self-Esteem Program that were meaningful and important to them. So it was a very personal thing. And then we used those to dance with. And at first they were like, uh, balance on my head. I can't do this. No, you know, this. <laughs> and within within 15 minutes, they were, Sully, look at this. How do I do back bends? <laughs> and the message was, when you think you can't do something, just remember this tray. When you have a math problem you can't do, remember this tray. When you want to be an engineer and you're told you can't, Remember this tray, you can do anything you want to because it only took 10, 15 minutes from I can't to, wow, look at this. So, you know, those things are very rewarding. I've also had uh, fun and fitness classes with young boys and um, these are military boys. So they're 12 years old um, and they're very strict about, you know, what they should and shouldn't be doing. So imagine putting hip scarves on them. They had so much fun listening to music and learning about the culture and wearing hip scarves and uh, shaking their booties that they actually wanted to go and show off. <laughs> and so they did. They interrupted everybody else's classes and they went and they shook their booty with the hip scarves. And um, so, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It raises awareness. And that's really important when you have um, it. it um, it's a way of... Um, removing discrimination and bullying and things like that when you understand uh, that people are just people. They have different music, but they're just the same. It's so amazing that you can bring to the table and those skills that you can sort of come in and share. Before we, uh, just so I don't want to lose it, I know that the Dove program um, is a regular program, so we will share that in the comments section if that is something that you're interested in. Um, I know that it is coming back, so we will share that. And also, uh, you talked about the um, employment service and the work that you do with them. If that seems like a service that you would benefit from, we can put that link in and you can talk to one of our volunteers like Suli or Sarah and really get uh, the benefit of their expertise as well. Yeah, and just one last thing. I do uh, volunteer outside of, uh, outside of PMFRC and PSP. I teach, uh, this program just ended in March, just uh, when COVID started, but it was helping newcomers to Canada, helping with uh, their English, ESL. Um, and part of that was also settlement. Because I came as an immigrant and I saw uh, what my parents went through, there is a barrier in that people who are not immigrants sometimes don't understand the challenges. For example, there was one very, very qualified guy from Arnprior. Uh, he's written books, he's a professor, and over a year, he could not get a job here. And so we did like an interview prep. And the issue was that he did not make eye contact. 
because in his country, in his culture, that's very rude. Whereas in Canada, if you don't do that, it's like there's something weird about this guy. So we like him, but we won't hire him. So there are a lot of different cultural differences. And there's also um, people who coming to this country don't know what things are available and how to go about finding them. So it's a gap that I could close. And in the process, I learned a lot because we gave uh, these, I had students from China, Japan, Korea, Turkey, Syria, of course, um, um, of various countries in Africa. And uh, we used to have potlucks and they would have to explain what they made and why. Um, you know, uh, we had Turkish tea from, uh, from uh, brought in from Istanbul. So I, I learned a lot and we gave them projects like um, pick a, pick a, a province and um, um, a tourist attraction in that province and talk about it. So they had to do some research, but then I learned all kinds of things about Canada too. So it's when you're talking, like even the stuff in our community that we don't know about that, you know, you are sort of bringing in and sharing. Um, Sarah, can yeah. we could get some information from Suli? Maybe that newcomers program, we can share a link to that if people are interested in that, just so they would know how they would go about that if they were interested in that. Thank you very much for, for sharing all that. That's awesome. You're welcome. So yeah, I find it very personally, very fulfilling and fun. And it's a good way to meet people. And I think it's a great program that PMFRC and PSV have. And I put a note down, if I ever need help with nuclear fuel, you are the person I'm going to call <laughs> first. Sydney, um, you also volunteer with us and you are one of our board members. Um, can you talk about your volunteer experience and, uh, and what it means to you? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on today. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to follow up on uh, Suli's booty shaking stories. Uh, we don't really have many of those on the board of directors. It's a lot of governance and financial oversight. Uh, so basically the, the same kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, so I have been on the board of directors for almost a year now. I think I started around the same time that Sarah Gunter did. Um, it's been super, super rewarding and super fulfilling. And my story is actually quite similar to uh, Sarah Walker's in the sense that I had some skills. I was in a new community. Uh, my background's in policy and administration. And I was looking for somewhere that I could help my new community um, in a way that I could really bring skills. Uh, so I applied to the board of directors, went through the process that Sarah had mentioned. Um, we had an interview, uh, criminal record check, those types of things. Um, I was really, really pleasantly surprised joining the board in that the group of women that are on the board right now that serve on the board of directors are super diverse and super accomplished in all of their backgrounds, whether it's financial or marketing or they're the mother of children who participate in the program. Um, there's really a, a wide variety of different opinions and different backgrounds that really assist with that um, oversight to make sure that the organization is running at a uh, you know, it's, it's top capacity uh, for the programming for the community. And I think that that all comes from a place of these women generally want the programming to be the best that it can be. Um, so bringing all of that diverse knowledge and talking things out, um, making sure that we're accountable in all the ways that we, we legally are, um, it's, it's really, it's a really beneficial, um, a really beneficial way to, to spend some extra time and to get to know um, some really, really interesting and accomplished people. Um, the other part that I will say just about volunteering in general is that any community that I've lived in, I've always wanted to volunteer there because I feel like the community um, gives back to its people in spades in the way that volunteers tend to give to it. Um, so I volunteered, for instance, for the Young Diplomats of Canada for the past couple of years. And you also never know what kind of opportunities are going to arise from that. Um, I ended up within that program being able to lead a delegation of diplomats to Germany um, just through volunteer work. So you really never know where the opportunity is going to take you. Could be a free trip across the world. Uh, could be looking through financial documents, you know, whatever floats your boat. I think that the PMFRC really has um, absolutely every type of um, skill set would be welcomed and celebrated and appreciated and really give back to this community. That's well, awesome. Before you move on, I just want to um, add to what Sydney said, because, you know, out of all the governance stuff that she did speak about, which, you know, is fun for some of us, 
um, she neglected to comment on accreditation, which is a huge piece of what the organization is about. And, um, you know, it really sets the standards of what our processes and procedures to make sure that we have a transparent um, and safe environment for staff and clients. But the good and exciting news for me personally is that Sydney has joined our accreditation team. So she's gonna bring some of those um, policy and, and skill sets and everything back to the table, which will only help us in our accreditation review. And that's fun, right? Right? <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, really it does. When you walk into the PMFRC buildings, when we're all allowed to do so again, um, you can see the certificate, the certifications on the walls uh, that demonstrate reaching those standards. And I can say personally, as someone who has worked in policy for a long time and worked through the accreditation process, it's not easy to meet those standards and a lot of organizations don't or they don't even attempt to go through the process because it is so daunting and so cumbersome. It looks through every single aspect from your paperwork to um, client reviews and it's, it's really, really, really intensive and PMFRC just knocks it out of the park. Um, every aspect of their programming meets every single standard. Um, and it really sets a standard for the next couple of years of things that they can drive to to continuously improve. So yeah, I, I think the PMFRC is, is really a stand up uh, organization in all of those regards. Thank you, Sydney. Um, Claudia, one of the things that uh, Sarah does in the Volunteer Services Committee and is a new program that's uh, for the uh, Air Force families. Um, can you talk a little bit about that just in case people have seen it online and want a little bit more information about how they would get involved? Absolutely. So the RCAF Family Sponsorship Program, it's a way for um, families to stay connected with the units. And I say the Air Force units. Um, the MFRC already does a lot of welcoming new families and doing that process, but this is just a complement to that. Um, and it's a program that's offered from coast to coast. So it will help improve communication. It's a consistent level of support that applies directly from families to the RCAF units. In this case, it's uh, 450 for us. Um, so if your spouse or partner, loved one, uh, is posted to an RCAF unit, this program will apply to you. The program's reliant on volunteers, which uh, is where Sarah comes in. So she oversees the training and the orientation of the volunteers, of the, the sponsors themselves. And all you really need to do if you are interested in volunteering in this program is just have a desire to help the RCAF families. Um, and then Sarah does this in collaboration with uh, the unit reps from uh, 450. So the program supports new families coming into the base. So um, we know that, you know, posting messages uh, are out and house hunting trips are happening. People are being posted in. So if you are a new family to the community, if a sponsor hasn't reached out to you or if you're interested in getting that connection, you can reach out to Sarah or you can reach out to uh, 450. Uh, and also if you're a family that's experiencing a um, service related um, separation deployed, something like that, that qualifies as well. Um, it, this uh, doesn't replace any initiatives that are already in place, whether for the RCAF or for the Army. Again, it's just something that if you're posted to an RCAF unit, uh, it's just an additional support service. But if um, you are not posted to an RCAF unit, uh, please call us because we will hook you up with the right people um, to stay connected and let us know how we can help your families and go from there. Sarah? Before we move on to our, our last question, I just wanted to, to mention we were talking about new families and I know that a lot of new families, you may have a teenager um, and moving into the high school system and you may not be aware that in Ontario, in order to graduate when regular rules apply, um, teens need to have 40 hours of community service work in order to graduate and some people may be coming towards the end of a high school career and may not know where to start. You have a volunteer program specifically for youth at the PMFRC. Do you want to track a little bit quickly before, that, before we end? Yes. So we, I run a volunteer program every Tuesday. It was at the Southside Community Center. So we'll see what that looks like next year. Um, it's exclusive for um, anyone that's 14 to 18 years old. And what we do is we collaborate together and we work on a variety of projects every uh, Tuesday. So it's anywhere between crafting, we do event prep, uh, we do administrative work, anything like that. It's a really great way to gain those community service hours, but also meet uh, new friends and learn new skills. And the teams do not have to be for military families. Anybody can participate. 
open to anybody as long as you're 14 in between the ages of 14 to 18 years old. Perfect. Claudia, before we go, we've touched on this a couple of times, and um, I, I think that one of the things that volunteers bring to our program, and as each of them have talked about their background and sort of what they bring to the table, it's hit home to me that one of the things that our volunteers uh, contribute the most is who they are and their experience and, and, and their background. Um, and that feedback is just invaluable to us. PMFRC feedback is a big thing for us. Do you want to talk about feedback, what we do with that, and why we love getting it? Sure. So volunteers take a key role in all of our departments, right from the governance level of the board, um, right down to the individual programs and activities that they support. So they, there's valuable feedback there. They are, and I've said this before, working frontline with the employees directly with our families. They're connected. And so they're, um, every time we do an activity or a program, we do an after action report. So we solicit feedback from everybody, from the families, from the employees, from the volunteers, and it's all taken into consideration. And that's what helps us improve the program from year to year. Uh, or uh, it's not uncommon that a volunteer is out in the community and is hearing some stuff from families or uh, something cool that's going out there where they'll say, hey, you know, what about doing this? And then Sarah comes up with the idea and then that, it just takes off. Takes off like a hat, we create a committee and, uh, and then we go from there. So the feedback is structured in a way that um, allows us the opportunity to learn about the experiences. So, um, you know, when we create a program, we wanna make sure that a program removes the barrier for a military family. Um, and how does it do that? And how do we know that that program and activity um, is successful? Because we can offer a program, but you know, the whole point of what we're doing is trying to better support military families. So we try to figure out what those things are and the volunteers will help us with that. And um, I think they, they will provide the feedback and the recommendations that make us more effective, more efficient. Um, we collect the data of all of the feedback uh, every quarter. Uh, it gets shared with the board of directors, obviously. And then when we look at planning for the next quarter, we take all of these things into consideration. There's times where you know um, we'll get feedback from one program and it applies to several programs that we run. It only makes us um, better, um, more uh, understanding of what some of the uh, barriers and challenges are that military families face. And what's more important, we've really opened up the avenues of how families can stay connected with us and tell us what they think. You don't have to wait for a feedback form. You don't have to wait to a program or an activity. You don't have to wait for Garrison Day to talk to the, you know, the compilation of staff and board members that are at our table. We are accessible through Facebook, through Messenger, through um, a feedback link uh, on our CAF Connection site. Going in the comment section. <laughs> comment section. Feedback is very important for us. It drives um, what we do. It drives us through our strategic plan, which Maybe Sydney, you can share a little bit about from the board's perspective, how important feedback is in your decision making. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Claudia. Um, super important, just to be quite frank. Uh, the feedback loop really improves every single aspect of programming. So as a board, we take it really seriously. Uh, as Claudia said, we look at it sort of in two ways. So as feedback comes in ad hoc manners, if there's issues that need to be addressed with the board, um, either good or positive, or sorry, positive or negative, um, we take both just as seriously. Um, and then there's also the data subset that is created by the um, types of feedback loops that Claudia was discussing that we do look at um, quarterly. We do meet monthly. So again, if there are um, issues that do come up, we address them um, as, they, as they're raised. But I think what's important is that um, for us, I think that the staff, the volunteers, and Claudia is the executive director, we have a lot of faith in the, in the programming and the decision that um, is being made. But for the people who are servicing it, um, we need to make sure that it is absolutely meeting the needs of the community. Uh, so the feedback is the most important aspect of everything we do. And we balance that essentially with our accountability measures. So um, feedback is important, but we need to make sure that um, all the programming is safe, um, is financially responsible, and that there's the governance oversight as well. So for us, it's, it's a little bit of um, a process and making sure that the feedback is implemented in a way that's also responsible. Um, 
right now I would say that uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a plug. So <laughs> apologies, but if these are the things that you you care about addressing, if you really care deeply about this programming um, or the services that are provided to yourself, to your family, to the community at large, you know, participate in the annual general assembly. That's a really great uh, place to give some annual feedback every year. There's a volunteer committee as well, if you care about the volunteer services. And we're also at a point right now where we're going into board recruitment. Um, we have uh, lost a few members due to deployment and we're looking for new energy consistently, new ideas, um, new ways to keep you know ourselves accountable just as the board uh, keeps the organization accountable. So. Uh, if you're interested, I believe that we'll put some information on um, how you can apply to any of those things, but I would, I would highly encourage it. And I know that I've received a lot of benefits from that and um, from receiving that community feedback. And I'm sure that whatever skill set you bring, um, you'll, you'll feel the same reward. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there is a, a page on CAF Connection for the board that we can share. And if you want to get a hold of Claudia, um, her number is in the contact list that we're sharing as well. Claudia, just before you go, um, our volunteer opportunities, our volunteers mostly have not been joining us. They have been working from home, um, but a number of them have been involved in a very special project for the last couple of uh, weeks. Do you wanna talk about that massive undertaking? Right, so um, masks, we're all aware of masks. And so the um, base had put a call out uh, for volunteers that would be interested in um, sewing the masks for the CAF members. And so I uh, approached Sarah and uh, full force ahead. I don't even think uh, she had like eight names to me within two hours. It was simply amazing, uh, the response from the volunteers. And uh, I think we're what, up to 1500, close to 1500, Sarah, masks that uh, volunteers have made. So I, um, I actually have a quote from the um, commanding officer of um, her services. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ian Clark. And so I'm just going to read this. So I'm going to look down, but this was the message that he had asked me to share with those volunteers. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted us all, impacted us all, but it has also shown how our community can come together to help each other. Uncertainty has been matched with adaptation and a resilient community spirit. The pandemic is not over, but we have continually adapted to the challenges. A key adaptation has been the wearing of non-medical masks in work in public settings, and the efforts of the PMFRC volunteer team to create these masks has greatly contributed to the health and safety of the garrison. Masks are a simple but effective way of inhibiting the spread of the COVID-19 virus. They were not, however, an item that most households and workplaces had in great supply before the pandemic. Industry takes time to manufacture and distribute masks and the initial focus with industry has rightly been on the production of medical personal protective equipment. This is where a de dedicated core of MFRC volunteers stepped up and filled the demand for non-medical masks with their time and skills. The military provided the raw materials and a template approved by health professionals. The PMFRC volunteers then used their skill to transform these materials into wearable masks. A volunteer coordinator picked up materials from the base, delivered them weekly to the por porches of our volunteers, picking up completed masks along the way. The volunteers then measured and cut cotton nylon pieces for the inner and outer layer of the mask, paracord for the head support and wire for the nose support. Having cut the materials, the volunteers then sewed the mask with finished edges, inserting wire and paracord and pressing for the completed mask. Uh, to date, the team had completed 1,250 masks with more on the way. This has tremendously helped the Garrison family in return to work and indeed the conduct of essential everyday activities with increased health and safety under the conditions of the pandemic. I would like to thank the following volunteers. Elizabeth Atticott, Fran Jones, Barbara Nagel, Karen Prail brown Adam Romerill, Ethan Visser, Amanda Woods, Michelle Wright, Lieutenant Keisha shin -Yet. I'm very grateful for the resourcefulness, dedication, and community spirit displayed by the PMFRC, PMFRC volunteers in the production of non-essential masks for Garrison. Uh, warm regards, Ian. So all I have to say, that was a lot of work. And uh, if you had seen uh, Sarah's face the day that the, um, the base dropped off the bolts of cloth and the rolls and rolls of wire and cord, Sarah came to pick them up and she's like, oh my, 
<laughs> and here we are. Um, it's been amazing that of what the volunteers have done. And I echo what um, the CEO has said. It's been an amazing amount of work for a very good reason. And uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it without those volunteers. So truly appreciate it on all fronts. Thank you all for joining us today. And I think the one thing that I've really taken away is like just like the, the, the broad range of experience and what our volunteers are bringing. Um, Sarah, your English as a second language, Shuli, uh, your coaching and your dancing and everything else that you bring to the community. Sydney, your love of subsets and data and feedback. Bless you. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, and our sewers, they, no matter what your skill is, no matter what you're bringing to the table, we can use it at the PMFRC. So if you're looking for a way to get involved, please contact Sarah. Um, next week, we are going to be talking about deployment again. We've talked about deployment in the past, but a number of families are dealing with an upcoming deployment. So we wanted to come back to that. Um, so we'll be answering your questions. Um, we will also be putting a post up on Monday. So you can add those questions and we will get to those. Um, one thing I did want to mention before we left, there is a program that is coming up July 13th and 15th. Um, it is art, it's an R2MR program, Road to Mental Readiness, Road to Mental Readiness. Um, I, I know the acronyms, but not like the names that go with it. And it's a reintegration workshop. So for people who have someone coming back for a, from a deployment to talk about some of those changes and some of those challenges and how your family can face them and give you a little bit um, of support. So we will uh, post the link to that. It is a course being offered. We will see in the post by uh, the Toronto and Southwestern Ontario MFRC, but it is open to families in our area. Um, and our deployment team is always here to back you up if you need that. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you all for joining our fireside chat. We will see you next time. Thank you again. And remember to check those contact uh, section, the comment section for all those contacts and all that information. Bye.